Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things Zyta. In today's episode I'm going to show you how we can debug and drop DLLs. These are DLLs that could be dropped by malware, either by downloading them remotely and then issuing a load library, or maybe being dropped from the resources of a target that we're debugging. And then I'm gonna show you how we can also debug remote threads, or threads in general, how we can catch them at the entry point and inspect their start parameters and their entry point with that let's get started all right just some background so what i'm dealing with is a synthetic example where i have the executable already running here and it has in its resources a dll that eventually it will drop now imagine a real life scenario this dll could be in the resources could be somewhere remote and then they're fetched load library is issued how can we catch it at the time of loading with IDAS debuggers and also how we can look at the entry point and maybe take a copy of the drop DLL if we wish before it gets deleted, for example. So this is uh, the first case here and it will in fact use the resources, load the library and delete the file. So let's see how we can catch that with IDA. Okay, so I'm going to run IDA. We can run IDA with minus T or no arguments at all. So here, going to run it with no arguments and attach. We're going to attach to the process that we know it will drop the DLL. So local Windows debugger and the process in question is this one here. And now that we're suspended in IDA, we're going to go to debugger options and enable this option here suspend on library load and unload what this lets the debugger suspend whenever dll is loaded this will give us a chance to catch a new load library invocation and so that should happen when the dll has been retrieved somehow was it from resources or uh, remote location and then load library was invoked if this was reflective loading we cannot use that approach we'll have to change the method so here we enable that option and resume and now suppose the drop will happen so I'm gonna invoke the drop functionality and here it is we do see an event either suspended and we see a temp file this is the DLL that this program has dropped we can follow it for example and take a copy before it gets deleted for example and this is DLN question now we can double click on this this is the image base we can also find it in the modules list here and say you know, jump to module base for example and now we need to put a breakpoint at the uh, dll main and in order, in order to find the dll main we'll have to retrieve it from the pe header this is something i spoke about in a previous video about the pe headers so to discover the entry point here let us apply structure. So we're going to apply image those header and uh, image NT headers and jump to the address of entry point. All right. So in order to do that, we need to import image those header. So for now, if I press shift F11, I don't see any type libraries because I started from no, no database whatsoever and didn't give a file loader in IDA a chance to preload the type library based on the input file. So here we know we're going to be importing image those headers. So we need any till that has that. So in this case, there are many options I can pick. This is 64 bit program. So I can pick anything like Windows 10, Windows 7, as long as X64. So I brought in that. Now, if I press Shift F1 to go to the local types and insert, we can import a standard structure and we can select image those header. This is the first part here. Now, if I go back here, press Alt Q and apply the structure. Here we have it. The first part, what we need to reach the entry point of a PE file, we need to go to ELFA new. So we're going to jump from the image base here to that value F0. So we're going to go here, press G and F0. Now we're in the PE header here. We need now the address of the entry point. So let's bring in the image NT header. So again, in the local types window, insert, we're going to import, and we're going to select image NT headers 64 or just image NT header, which is aliased to 64. 
okay so it got imported now we can alt q again apply structure and we select the proper structure here and here it is we applied it and here we should have address of entry point which is at that address this is the rva from the image base so if we press ctrl s we're gonna go here press enter again we back to the base go to plus and go there and this is the entry point here now if i wish i can uncheck this i get what i want now if i resume the dll will be fully loaded and we will have the entry point invocation through the ntdll so here here it is this is the entry point so imagine this is dll main it will be called on various dll reasons it's gonna be process attach detach so that's our entry point of course be mindful if we had other entry points such as tls callbacks you have to as well apply the same technique i showed you to put breakpoints on tls callbacks because they get executed before the ll main refer to my previous videos about the pe file format series so this is it for catching dropped dlls now let's simulate the secondary scenario here where we have a remote thread creation so remote threads usually happen where we have process one that will open a process handle to another process and then create a remote thread if we look at the api Create remote thread is very similar to create thread except that it takes the H process which could be a foreign process that we open a handle to in order to create the process remotely on that target process. So in IDA we have similar facility with the debugger options here. So the same way we had load library, catch suspend on load library. We have as well another event where we can suspend on thread start, thread exit. We can use this on the same process. So let's say we have a process that's not necessarily using create remote thread, it's just using create thread. We can enable that option to catch the creation of threads at any time. And then we can inspect the thread entry point and the thread parameters. So we can enable this already, but I'm going to be attaching to the remote process first. So it doesn't make sense for me to attach to this process in particular, but to the other one. So real quick here, with respect to that functionality, the remote thread test we have here, the way it works is I simply invoke the same process again with minus remote. And behind the scenes here, we, we create it. We're going to do a remote copy file which will internally use thread, uh, remote threads. So this process here that we're running will spawn itself and then create a remote thread in the spawn, in the child, just as a synthetic example. So let's uh, let it invoke a child process, which is a copy of itself. And then we're going to catch it as it does a remote thread creation. So here I'm going to press enter and here it is. It did create the child and we're going to attach to that child with this process ID in IDA. So here now I have that option enabled. Let's resume. And go back. Okay, so we have some threads here. Doesn't matter. They get created. We can inspect the entry point, but this is not the thread that the synthetic example is going to be creating. So to check the entry point of a thread, we're going to land here when the event happens and either suspends, we're going to land in RTL user thread start. And just by the way of NTDLL, the entry point of that thread will be in RCX. So this is a thread somewhere in NTDLL. This is not what we want. Let, uh, let these events finish. Let's go back to that process, which will create a remote thread to copy a file remotely. So this will invoke a remote thread into this process. And we're going to catch the code that's going to be executing in the context of that child. We are already attached to the child. So we're waiting just for this process here, the parent, to issue the remote thread creation. So now if I press any key, a remote thread will be created from this process into that process, which we are attached to. 
So here, I'm going to hit any key. And now we get Ida suspended against. Red has started. Let's just check the entry point. So I'm going to jump to RCX because that's where going to be this red entry point. And here it is. We are in a debug segment. And the debug segment is just an allocated memory that does not belong to a module. So it could be heap or virtual memory. Let's make code here and make function. And yeah, indeed, this looks like a remote thread procedure. It does look like it's using some indirect calls because apparently it's gonna rely on the thread parameters so it knows what to call and so on so the code that we invoke remotely has to be in the correct form the parent process should know what to invoke what are the addresses in the remote thread and this sample that i'm showing you knows how to do that so indeed this is the thread we care about and at rcx is the entry point and at rdx is gonna be the thread parameters so if we look back here, we are, when we create the remote thread, we are specifying parameters. This will be mapped to RDX, and that's the start address we're going to map to RCX. So I jump to RDX to check the parameters, the thread parameters. This looks like a pointer. Indeed, this is a pointer to copy file, which has been set up by the parent process. And this is one argument, so it's going to copy this to let's go here to this location here and we're gonna stay here keep the breakpoints and resume when the threat so we got suspended as I said and NTDLL eventually it will dispatch that remote threat so since we put a breakpoint, we're going to just resume hitting F9 and eventually NTDL dispatched that thread procedure. And here if we inspect, for example, it's going to be using the copy file and RCX is going to be in that invocation, the first argument, which is the source file and RDX is going to be the destination file. And like that, we caught the remote thread. All right, so that was it for today. What we learned is how to enable the debugger options, especially two events, suspend on load unload library and suspend on thread creation or thread exit. When it comes to load DLL, we can tell which DLL is loaded from the list of modules. And then to figure out the entry point, we simply parse the PE header and put a breakpoint at the entry point. And when it came to threads as well, we enabled the suspend on thread start or exit. And we simply can inspect the thread procedure and the thread parameters by looking at when we break in uh, NTDLL uh, as a response to a thread creation. We will follow RCX for the thread procedure and follow RDX for the thread parameters. So this technique can be used in IDA to figure out how we can uh, debug those two scenarios. In the future episode, I'm going to show you how we can extend the UI to add context menus where I'm going to be right clicking and selecting, for example, things like jump to entry point or right clicking on a thread and say jump to thread entry point, for example. So we're going to automate that in the future. Thank you and see you next time.